One aspect of my job is that I often work with couples and in the nature of coupleness, uh, generally it's couples in a time of trial. Sometimes it's couples preparing for marriage, but often it's a couple going through something, uh, a hardship, a loss, a death, maybe a miscarriage, maybe infidelity, maybe um, an addiction issue, maybe a spending issue, a place where there's a misalignment, maybe it's parenting and differences in their philosophies or their upbringings. And so I've done a number of counseling classes over the years. I could probably afford to do some more, but read a lot, um, lived some things in my own marriage, in my own experiences. And one of the most beautiful things, um, books that I have come across that I find to be really pivotal and fundamental and foundational for couples of all ages and stages is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And Chapman asserts that we each have a love language that we speak, the way that we convey love and also the way that we speak love. And we can sort of speak across them kind of like English dialects. We can understand them, but to really like feel that resonance in our heart, in our body, in our mind, it, we need somebody to speak our language. And so there are five languages, physical affection, words of affirmation, gift giving, acts of service, and quality time. And he says, you know, we generally have a dominant language. For me, it's physical affection. I grew up in a physically affectionate family, really healthy touch boundaries and um, hugs. And so that's part of my language. And I like to hug my kids. I like to hug my husband, hold hands, those kinds of things. For my husband, his language is words of affirmation. To be told, I love you, I respect you, I think you're doing a great job, I'm really impressed with you, uh, I think you're smart, I think you're handsome, I think you are persevering, tenacious, any of those things to sort of affirm him verbally. And that can be with words out loud, it could be through a text, a post-it note, a letter, a card, any of those things qualify as words of affirmation. For acts of service, those are people who uh, really feel loved and show love by doing. It may be doing the dishes or taking out trash or helping with a project or, you know, working on the house together or whatever it might be. Gift giving is fairly straightforward. They can be big gifts, small gifts, symbolic gifts, but generally in that sort of giving, that's where they love and feel loved. And then quality time. It may be sitting and watching a movie. It might be playing a board game. It might be going for a walk, riding in the car, spending time together that's sort of focused on each other. It's not just adjacent to like, oh, we were both at the movies, but doing something where there's engagement with each other growing together. So that's sort of the premise of the book. And uh, I find it really helpful. And the way that I talk about it with couples it sort of harkens back to a cereal commercial of the 90s for Wheaties cereal. And it used to be the commercial was you can eat 10 bowls of Raisin Bran or one bowl of Wheaties. And they would compare the nutritional data for those 10 bowls of Raisin Bran versus one bowl of Wheaties. And I think of our love languages in a very similar way. My husband can give me 10 words of affirmation or one hug. I can give him 10 hugs or one word of affirmation. I think you're amazing. Do you see the difference that he can speak my language or he can speak his language and sort of the nutritional value is different. I need a greater quantity of his to sort of measure how loved and filled my cup is. And similarly, if I'm just speaking my language, he's not really feeling that love. He can sense it, he knows it intellectually, but really filling his cup, I need to speak his language. And so I just wanna offer that. If you aren't familiar with the five love languages, I would encourage you, you might pick up the book, you might look at it online, you can do a survey online to sort of figure out what your love language is and what your partners might be. It doesn't have to just be a, relation, a romantic relationship. It works with friendships, it works with kids, right? Any relationship that we wanna be investing in, it really makes a difference in how we love them. And if we think about it in sort of scriptural terms or faith-based terms, in the Greek, there are multiple words for love, storge, eros, philos, and agape. And um, each of those is a verb. It's to love, it's an act of doing. It's not a sentiment, it's an action. 
And sometimes we have to show love before we feel loved, right? When we're called to love our neighbor, that's about the action, not about the sentiment. So we can think our neighbor is a total jerk, or maybe we've been hurt and we just have all of these negative feelings, but we can show love even when we don't feel loved. And the thing about love in a healthy relationship with decent boundaries, or let's upset some standards there, uh, when we show love, we often begin to receive love. And when we show love to our partner, they feel loved or to our parent or to our child or to our best friend, they feel loved and then they often reciprocate, mirror back to us love. And so uh, I just wanna offer that, knowing that being married is hard, being a couple is hard. It takes a lot of intentionality and work. There's a lot of ups and downs. And I want couples to know that if you're in a struggling spot, know it's normal, know there's help available to you and maybe start with the love languages start speaking the language of that person that matters the most to you trying to really fill their cup one bowl of wheaties uh, using their language and not just your language i hope it's helpful friends take care